Cookies, it's Liz from 95 Yoga House. Um, I'm here to give you just a little tutorial on Shirshasana, which is headstand pose. Um, so yeah, we're gonna work two, um, two different versions. Um, today, we're gonna go into supportive headstand and then tripod headstand. And then we'll work some progressions that you can lead up to getting into your full version of your headstand. And then we'll also um, maybe show you some, uh, show you a, a few tips for strength also. So, so one of the main things that we have to remember that our traps and our shoulders and our neck and our spine, especially our shoulders and our traps, really have to be strong to be able to take this inversion. So we want to build strength in through our shoulders and our traps. So, the, and just to set up yourself so you're successful for the headstand. So one of the main things that I want you to take out of this tutorial, um, if you take anything out of the tutorial at all, is absolutely positively no jumping into your headstand. We don't wanna jump into our headstand. We want to take it slowly, work the progressions, work the strength drills to get into your headstand um, carefully and, and safely. We, that's our main thing is we wanna make sure that you get into it safely because this involves our neck and our spine so we want to make sure that we do this very safely and with control. So, so one of the things that um, that we need to do is to find our headstand is to find the top or the crown of our head. Sometimes we um, will see people like with their forehead or maybe the back of their head on the earth. That's too far or too close to the forehead or to the back of the head. And then it's gonna round the spine and you're gonna dump into it. So we don't wanna do that. So we wanna find the crown of our head. So one good way to measure that is if you take your thumb into your third eye center, and then you take that little curve in your, in your hand and you place it just around and top and take your index finger and then stretch it to the top of your head. That's where you know the, where the top of your head is. So now that you know where that top of the head, it's always a good place to measure. That's where you're gonna go to. So, um, so let's go ahead, let's get to our, let's go to our mat um, and then we will talk about hand placement and where our hands need to be. So we want to, so where we place our hands is that if you interlace your fingertips and then tuck your pinkies in. So we're going to have these four points of contact. We're going to have the crown of our head, we're going to have the pinkies, the forehands, and the elbows. Those are the points of contact on the earth. So we find that point of contact, interlace, tuck your pinkies in. So we want to make sure that our elbows are in also just at shoulder distance apart. So one good way we can measure that also is grab those opposite elbows. Take your fingers, interlace them. Then open up your palms. So press the pinkies into the earth and then start to just lay that top of the head on the earth. So now as we lift up and lift your bow up to the earth, really press and keep those elbows and squeeze your elbows in, spine nice and long. So we don't want this roundness through our shoulders. We don't want to round through the shoulders and dump in through our shoulders. We want a strong, long spine here. So if you see through my shoulders, as I place my head down to the earth, we don't want this dump. We don't want to dump into our shoulders. We want to press and to squeeze the elbows in and use the pinkies and use the forearms and the elbows to lengthen the spine. So nice, long spine as you lift the tailbone up high. There, that's it, yep. So that's where we're gonna be. We don't wanna dump in through the shoulders. So let's go ahead and take the progression. We'll take this first progression. Let me straighten out my mat here, sorry. Kinda got, kinda got all tangled up there. So hopefully you can see me here. So we open up those palms, place the top of the head right in, on top of the mat. Go ahead and lift the toes. Spine is long, press those shoulders down and back. Keep on pulling the belly in. Now this can be your first progression. You don't even have to go any further than this. Just finding this inversion upside down. This might be a good place for you to stay and just breathe here. Just kind of notice here. Notice that 
anything that comes up, keeping the belly pulled up and in. If you want to take this progression to the next letter level and start building on that headstand, maybe take the knee and pull that knee in towards your chest. The spine is long. And then maybe take the other knee in towards your chest. You can even keep that one knee in. And once you come into this egg-like shape or this tuck shape, squeeze the knees in towards one another. Make sure you can breathe here. Keep on pressing through your fingers and through the forearms and through the elbows. Now that third progression, take the toes up towards the sky. And then press up through the other toes. Now really press really through those pinkies, through those forearms and through those elbows. Keep those elbows in. Now reach your toes long, pull the belly in and squeeze your inner thighs together. Good morning. That's it. Take as many breaths as you need here and you come out the same way. Pull the knee in towards the chest. Pull the second knee in. Lengthen. Drop your knees. Child's pose. Take the breath here. So slowly starting to build into that headstand so that you can just kind of hang out with your spine long and your tailbone long and just feel your balance there. You can even shift forward and back on your toes just to notice just a little bit too. So just to kind of notice where that balance is for you. And then once you've found and you feel stable enough, then you go to that second progression about pulling the knees, finding that egg shape and taking the knees in towards the belt well, and taking were, the knees and squeezing the knees well in. And then that third progression is lifting the toes up once you've found that stability. And lifting those toes up high, laying in through the toes, squeeze the inner thighs together, and then you come out and making sure that you can breathe. That's right. the most important thing also. Don't forget to breathe. We don't want to hold our breath. We want to find that steadiness, that focus. So feel, notice the focus, find something to gaze that back behind you to find that focus or listen in listening to that breath. Uh, you know, so coming through um, a, just a deeper or more, more advanced inversion or into the inversion that we can go into that once you feel stable by taking one leg up and then the other leg up, then we can come up with straight legs or we can progress through that straight leg. So go ahead and find that crown of your head, strong through the palms, spine is long, and then still find that egg shape. You can still find that egg shape. Taking the toes up long. And then once you feel that space, then we're going to take and lengthen the toe down towards the earth. Keeping the spine long, lift the toes right back up. Come and take it down through the other side. Lift it right back up. And then maybe you can take both toes down towards the earth. Take it down, take it down, take it down. Maybe just hover and then lift it right back up. Use your core to lift it right back up. And you can take that as many times as you need to or want to here. Or maybe you just find the breath and then maybe you take it a second time. And then as you come down, you take and shift the hips forward just a little bit. Keep long through the spine, lower down. Find your child's pose once again. So you can work that progression with those legs. So same thing as you do, you can come up and find that egg shape and then lift up high and then take the leg up and down or then you can once you feel like you have really good stability through your headstand then maybe you can start with lifting the toes and then lifting up towards the sky squeeze lengthen through the toes squeeze the inner thighs press down through the pinkies and you should feel some lightness through the crown of your head even though the crown of your head is a point of contact you want to be able to almost in a real world, maybe to lift that head so you feel a lot of lightness. So if you feel like you're really crunching the top of your head, then you're probably sagging through your shoulders. So we want to make sure that you want to press those shoulders down and away. We don't want them up by our ears, down and away, so you find some lightness through the top of your head. So moving through your, your tripod headstand, just moving on to this three point of contact headstand. So you have your head and then your two palms. And sometimes they say that this is more challenging. Some people have a little bit 
more of a challenge to do this because it's three point than the four point because you have a broader base in through the supported headstand so some people feel um and some people it's vice versa so it kind of depends on your body and your stability so so let's go into tripod headstand so one of the things to that tripod headstand that we see a lot or sometimes we see is that our head placement so we want that triangle head placement so fingertips are spread wide pressing pressing into the earth and they're facing the front of your mat so the front edge of your mat and so and that head is going to be you're going to find the crown of your head and it's going to be placed in front of your palms not in between the palms so we don't want the head here and we don't want the elbows and we don't want our palms way out here or our palms in really close so find that point of contact you can either put those elbows down find that point of contact place the palms right where your elbows are so go ahead and place the top of your head down to the earth now you should be able to see your fingertips here so if you can't see your fingertips if they're way out here you are too far and then don't bring them really close in because you don't want them really close into you either you want them shoulder distance apart so as we curl our toes under lift the hips so lengthen through the spine once again press through the palms that's it keep on squeezing the elbows in don't let them flare out squeeze in squeeze in take your right knee and again you can stay here if you want go ahead and take that left knee in towards the top of the tricep right knee in towards the top of the tricep squeeze here maybe the big toes touch pull the belly in and then maybe you start to extend and you can stay in that three point of contact by keeping those knees on the triceps perfectly okay until you find your stability to lift your toes up towards the sky you can come down just as you came in or you can bring both knees to your triceps lower down child's pose let yourself rest and then restart as you want to so talking about pro, um, the the strength maybe doing some strength work in through to get into our headstand so we want to strengthen the core so one great way that we can strengthen through the core is taking a hollow hold so if you come to your back so you come to that back and you're going to extend your legs out reach your fingertips towards the back wall now we want to find that point of contact so our point of contact is our lower back so we don't want to arch our lower back and open up our ribcage close your ribcage tuck your pelvis in reach your fingertips long or reach your toes long lift your lift your gaze so lift the shoulders keep your chin neutral look up towards the sky you can reach those fingertips long or you can even take those fingertips towards your toes now be honest with yourself on keeping that lower back don't lower those toes and then start to arch that back because it totally defeats that purpose that's it so once you reach up high you can reach back up high bring the toes up towards just up towards the sky and then start to lower down now you can take those palms underneath your booty a little bit if you want want a little bit more stability but again you want to find that core action so maybe keep on reaching you can still lift the shoulders take them up take them down and take them nice and slowly nice and slowly don't let the back arch you can even take one leg at a time take the right toe down lift up Take the left toe down, so do lift up, and just alternate as many times as you like. Here, hold that hollow hold as much as you like. Hold it for five breaths, ten breaths. Find and relax, pull the knees in, find a little rock, massage the lower back. That other strength move that we can take is bridge. So as you come into to bridge, as we lift the hips, different versions of the bridge, you can let me move that, let me move down just a teeny bit here. So as we come into bridge, you can lift that booty up high and you can stay and hold here. And where you can lower down and then lift up, lower down and lift. And you can take this as many times again as you like. Maybe you can take up and you can take a little squeeze and lift just a nice little micro little squeeze here 
you can stay in this back bend. You can even go into full wheel. So as you come into your full wheel, this is a more advanced progression. So come into your full wheel, press into your palms. Now, find a little dip into the elbows. Take your head down and press right back up. Take it down, press right back up. And just do this as much as you feel that you find strength that will strengthen the shoulders. And then just lower down. You can take a second round if you want. Pull the knees in towards your chest. Nice little rock and roll here. And find that again. So, just coming back to those most important things, just those little tips, absolutely, positively no jumping into your headstand. Work the progressions, work the strength so you can successfully get into your headstand. The other thing too that you might want to do is if you feel um, just a, you just feel like, ah, oh, you know, I'm in the middle of the room, I don't know if I, am I gonna, am I gonna fall over? Um, and you know what? You, you might, you probably will fall over, but we can do it safely. Make sure that you don't have anything in the room around you that you're gonna fall into to hurt yourself because we, we don't want that to happen. So you can go up against a wall if you like, if you wanna try going up against the wall, or maybe you have a couch that you can go and you know if you're gonna, if you're gonna go, for, go roll, roll backwards, then you can go ahead and you'll land on the couch. So those are might be some things that you might want to be want to do too, but work the progressions. Be move, don't rush. Take your time. Work diligently on working the, into your headstand, but tread lightly. Be kind to yourself. Don't and have patience. It all takes time and to build up those strength and build up the trust that you have that you can actually pull that headstand. So hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Hope that helps. Have a great day.